Hi everyone, my name is Sue Min and I am a fourth year undergraduate student at the University of Toronto. And today I will be showing you guys how to make your own lava lamps. So let's get started. The materials that you need are vegetable oil, water, a glass, some food coloring, and some aspirin. If you don't have aspirin, you can go get some denture cleanser tablets that are found at the local dollar store. Just make sure that the ingredients include citric acid and sodium bicarbonate. First, pour the vegetable oil into the glass so it's around three quarters full. Next, pour some water into the glass. Then add a couple drops of food coloring and give a quick stir. To get a better view of the experiment, you can put a flashlight underneath the glass. Then add one to two aspirins or denture tablets then turn off the light and look at the glass. We can see that there are little bubbles that are rising from the bottom to the top. Now scientifically, let's go deeper into what is actually happening in this experiment. There are two principles at play here, polarity and density. So let's talk about polarity first. If you noticed before, when we poured the water into the oil, the two liquids did not mix very well, and the water separated more down to the bottom of the glass. Water is polar because water molecules have uneven electrical charges, positive and negative charges, within its structure. So some parts of the water molecules are more positively charged, while other parts are more negatively charged. The more positively charged ends of the water molecules will be attracted to the more negatively charged ends of other water molecules. Oil, on the other hand, do not have positive or negative charges within its structure. So they are not attracted to the water molecules. This is why the oil and water do not mix very well. Food coloring drops are also polar. That's why they mix or dissolve well with the water, but not with the oil. The next principle at work is density. Density measures the amount of matter, which is the substance that the material is made of, in a certain amount of space. More dense objects have more atoms tightly packed together in the same amount of volume or space in comparison to an object that is less dense. If I have two different substances with different densities, the substance that is more dense will sink to the bottom. This means that if I were to measure out equal volumes of water and oil and pour them into the same glass, because the water is more dense than the oil, the water will sink to the bottom since there are more water molecules that are packed more tightly closer together in the same volume. Density is also affected by the temperature of the substance. This means that the hotter a substance or liquid is, the less dense and lighter it will become. So in a real volcano with lava, the heat causes the temperature of the liquid at the bottom to increase, making the liquid less dense and rise up. The liquid becomes less dense because the heat is increasing the volume or the space that the water droplets takes up, but the amount of substance or mass is not changing. Therefore, the density decreases. In our own lava lamp, instead of using heat, we use aspirin or denture cleaner tablets, which react with the water to produce carbon dioxide gas bubbles. These gas bubbles then stick to the water droplets, and the combination of the water and gas together become less dense than the oil. So they rise to the top, and we see this bubbling. Once the bubbles reach the top, they pop and the carbon dioxide gas escapes into the air, which then allows the water to sink back down to the bottom again because they become more dense without the gas. Density can also explain why a boat is able to float on water. The boat is less dense than the water underneath it. Therefore, this allows the boat to float. The key takeaways from this experiment are polarity, where like dissolves like. So polar mixes well with other polar molecules 
and nonpolar molecules mix well with other nonpolar molecules. And second, density, which describes the amount of matter within a certain amount of space. So the more dense a substance is, the more likely it will sink if it's submerged in a substance that's less dense. Please don't forget to like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also participate in our contest. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this experiment, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye!